Ever since the Vision Hunt decree went into effect, the winds of fate brought a wandering samurai into the deck of a well-renowned ship seeking refuge from an unexpected thunderstorm. Even though he has traversed around many lands and avoided countless torrents of storms, this particular one awaited him as if it was marked by destiny. His name, Kaedehara Kazuha, hails from the land of eternity where civil war and political unrest currently exist. Once a part of a noble samurai clan to leading a carefree life as a wanderer, and now, a wanted man hunted by the Bakufu. I am Kaidohara Kazuha, a wanderer who roams the land. Since we are both travelers, let us journey together for a time. Kaidehara Kazuha is a breath of fresh air. Being the first playable character from Inazuma, he has become a fan favorite because of his flexibility and usefulness with certain teams. A character described as having a modest and gentle personality, he has surely made some friends along the way. Even before his life as a wanderer, he has gained the ability to predict the weather and listen to nature's will. Thus, when the time came of roaming the islands of Inazuma, this ability has helped him in countless situations. Unfortunately, this time, he had not foreseen the storm clouds that gathered above him bringing thunderstorms upon his next journey. Kaedehara Kazuha was not born a commoner, but as a son of a noble samurai clan that existed in Inazuma City. The city was once home to many illustrious clans, known far and wide across the nation, and the Kaedehara clan was one of the most renowned among them. However, by the time Kazuha was to inherit his clan's fortunes, there was nothing left as the family's wealth was depleting. Such a pity that by the time the noble name passed to him, the only thing left was the title of Kaedehara. Under these circumstances, one can find themselves in a state of misery, seeing as one's family's future crumbles upon their eyes. Still, Kazuha had little concern and breathed a sigh of relief, knowing that his dream as a wanderer would soon come true. A samurai has no need of a lavish life. We find all that we need in wine, song, and the blade in our hands. Even as a child, he's always been close with nature, and now that he's free of family responsibilities, this provided a great opportunity for him to begin a life as a wandering samurai. Roaming the majestic mountains and gloomy forests of Inazuma, he took this as his deep admiration for the beauty of nature. No one knows how, but to Kazuha, he believes that nature has gained him a favor of having a very keen sense of hearing. He claims to hear all sorts of sounds, such as the winds blowing through mountain passes, the parting clouds, the sound of foxes chewing on apples in the forest, and even the sound of crabs blowing bubbles in the sea. Taking it with a grain of salt, it is possible that his clan's bloodline can be also tied to some elemental magic instead. Similar to how the Kamisato clan has an art called Senho, and it can be seen through Ayaka's alternate sprint. The Kaidehara clan could have also had an art wherein they could easily interact with nature, which can explain how Kazuha has the ability to predict weather and detect even the slightest of sounds. To him, nature was never been silent. When the quietness of the wind comes and the world around him falls still, that is the calm before the storm. When silent springs suddenly leap into activity, it is the omen of a great earthquake. By using the signs that nature has shown him, Kazuha was always out of harm's way. He was never a person who wanted to live a luxury life, and now that he is also unburdened by his clan's responsibilities, he immediately thought, why not go wandering and travel light? Since then, these words made him start his never-ending journey like a falling leaf in the yard, carried away by the wind. The story of Inazuma starts with the wind, which carries to another huge shift in the story. And it was really interesting how the prologue gave us Kazuha as an introduction to Inazuma, because his character is a huge contrast to the state of affairs that happened there. When the Raiden Shogun wanted eternity, 
she prevented her people to go beyond their capabilities, or in other words, to change as a whole. This is a contrast to Kazuha's character, who represents the maple leaf, which is associated with the autumn season that Japan sees as a symbol of change. Also to break down his name, the first part of his surname, Kaede, means maple leaf, and can also be associated with strength and tranquility. The second part of his surname, Hara, means belly, but with a deeper layer into it, also means one's true self. As the human belly can be seen as the center of the body, so if you put them together, Kaede Hara can be translated as tranquility as one's true self. Now as for Kazuha, it means a myriad of leaves, and is probably why Kazuha has an animal vision and can be able to hear the sounds of nature. We can also associate him as a wanderer who is like fallen maple leaves traveling with the wind. The first character of his name literally means 10,000, but it is often used more broadly to mean a number which is vast and difficult to fathom. Now is the reason behind this. It is quite unsure, as they adopted this to Kazuha's elemental burst, named Kazuha Slash. And when it is activated, Kazuha would create an autumn whirlwind, where we can see a myriad of maple leaves. Now as for his constellation, Acer Palmatum, it is also associated with the maple leaf, because it is the scientific name of the Japanese maple. In his many travels throughout the islands of Inazuma, there came a day when Kazuha had no shelter above his head. A thick fog covered the mountains like a blanket, waves fell silent, and just the faint whisper of the wind can be heard. As Kazuha stuck out his tongue, the air tasted heavy and gloomy. With his familiar sense of nature, this was a sign that it will soon rain. As he continued on his trail, he stared into the distance and spotted a plume of smoke up ahead. He was relieved that he had a place to stay for the night. Hence, Kazuha visited this mysterious house and met its owner. He then informed the owner that a storm was coming, but the house owner doubted him. When noon arrived, the rains arrived right on cue. In awe of his skill, the owner eagerly offered him to stay at his place for the time being. So just as the storm raged into the night, Kazuha's mind began to wander, holding his blanket close to him while listening to the heavy drops of rain against the autumn leaves. In the time since the Kaidehara clan's fortune had faded away and he had set off on his journey, Kazuha has had his fair share of adventures and had become intimately acquainted with the troubles of being a wanderer. Moving between islands usually meant traveling by sea, but Kazuha would make these trips alone, in a small, slow boat making things all the more dangerous when he has to set sail against strong headwinds or violent thunderstorms. Yet, there was a limitless fascination to be found in this journey of his, where the vast sky and boundless earth was his home, and all living things that inhabited them were his friends. He had contemplated a mantra, If one's heart is empty, all under heaven is empty. But if one's heart is pure, all under heaven is pure. This is when he decided to be at peace with himself, fully accepting his feelings and life as a wanderer. With his sword in hand and his chosen path in his heart, he could go on his way with a song on his lips, having nothing to fear, no matter the dangers he may face. That night, Kazuha slept soundly as his mind was now at rest, having made peace with his feelings. It was the morning after that night, that he woke up to a shining animal vision on his chest. It was very climatic that his vision was granted after his acceptance of himself because of the relevance to his surname. It gives a beautiful meaning to his backstory because Kazuha received his vision as a result of embracing his surname's meaning, which is being at peace with himself. It's no surprise that his vision is of animal, the element of freedom. He embodies this freedom to choose and to live his life as he wants. This also shows in his abilities and playstyle in game, which is full of movement and refinement. In this vision story of his, this mantra is likely a reference to mantras from the Heart Sutra, 
a popular sacred text in many schools of Mahayana Buddhism, including Japanese Zen schools. They were the standard religion for the samurai. In this context of Kazuwa's vision story, realizing one's heart is empty is equivalent to achieving nirvana or perfect happiness and quietude, which is the ultimate goal of Buddhism. After leaving Inazuma City, Kazuwa wandered here and there. All that he saw on the road filled him with curiosity and every journey had a story. During one early summer, Kazuo was traveling together with a merchant. Walking on wet roads and under heavy rain, they saw a small straw hut at the far end of the road. The merchant was thrilled at the sight of the hut, saying, Kazuha, look, we'll have a roof over our heads tonight. But Kazuha did not speak. He paused and attentively listened for a long while before he finally replied, If you were to ask my opinion, it may be best to stay away but the merchant did not wish to stay in the rain. He left Kazuha and made his way to the house. Upon knocking at the door, the traveling merchant was met by a lovely woman who offered him shelter, tea, food, and even a nice warm bed for the night. Perhaps it was the excellent food, but the merchant quickly became drowsy and fell asleep immediately after finishing his meal. When he awoke the following morning, there was no roof over his head as the bright sunlight pierced his eyes, and all he could see was Kazuwa standing nearby, looking down at him and smiling. Before the merchant could speak, he vomited a great pile of leaves and mud, and as for the nice warm bed which he had slept so soundly, ah, it too was mud. Kazuwa smiled and said, The wind is weaker where there are houses, yet here stood a hut, and there was no change in the mountain breeze. I think you might have become the victim of a Baki Danuki's prank. Never mind, next time, listen more closely to the wind and tread with care. Since then, the merchant learned a lesson and followed Kazuha's advice. Kazuha made many friends during his travels. One of them he met by chance and formed a strong bond. This friend of his was particularly close to his heart, and for a time, they journeyed together. However, they had to separate as their destinations were different. Kazuha thought that this must be the work of fate, letting them meet one another. So, even though they would part ways for now, he believed that they would meet again. But then the Raiden Shogun announced the Vision Hunt decree and vowed to retrieve all visions. This resulted in all vision holders fleeing and hiding their identities from the Shogunate army. This also includes Kazuha who moved from place to place and tried to avoid the vision hunters. He would soon receive news that someone called for a duel before the throne, and that someone was none other than his dear friend. This was not the typical duel, as the defeated would be executed by the Raiden Shogun. As mentioned in his story teaser, there will always be those who dare to face the lightning's glow. Demonstrating the meaning of courage, and would also witness the famed Musono Hitotachi. Yet, Kazuha feared for his friend and went as fast as he can to Tenchukaku, but arrived too late as his friend was already struck with the full force of lightning. Still, he could not give up on his friend and snatched his vision while escaping the scene. From that moment on, his days of peaceful wanderings were over and Kazuwa's life became an unending series of battles. This constant fighting left him feeling lost and perplexed. Still, he had no regrets about trying to save his friend, but he could not help but think, is this endless conflict truly the only way to assert one's ideals? This is why Kazuwa's theme was perfectly shown in his story teaser. Kazuwa's embodiment of freedom directly contrasts the lack of freedom in Inazuma, where the Vision Hunt Decree has been in full force for the past year, causing a huge change in Inazuma's politics and atmosphere. Also, a big theme in the prologue that Kazuo emphasizes are visions. In his perspective, a vision is proof of one's own strength. It's not that having a vision makes someone strong, but rather, it seems to be that those who are strong may receive visions. 
Kazuha was so against the decree because it's taking away the result of one's own strength. It's taking away something that helps people reach their goals, and this gives a sense of freedom to his ideals. As he says about the Raiden Shogun, My dissatisfaction with her has its roots in the Vision Hunt decree. No one has the right to rob another of their hopes and dreams. Not even a god. As Kazuha learns more about the Traveler and their ability to control the elements without a vision, he ponders more about the meaning and purpose behind visions. In essence, what are the criteria for which how people are granted visions? This is further questioned when the Raiden Shogun herself told us that she doesn't give out people electro visions. Additionally, what are the criteria for taking away visions? Why would an Archon take away visions when Archons are to look after their respective nations? But now that we know the Raiden Shogun's desire for eternity, it still doesn't answer the question of how visions are granted upon the people of Tevat. While I do think that it's natural for the Traveler to have these questions, it's really admirable that Kazuha is the one to resurface those questions back for the Traveler, because he himself genuinely wants to know the answers to these questions as well. Now a wanted man in his hometown, Kazuha first met with the Resistance, and eventually fled to Rito, meeting Beido, thus beginning his new journey with the Crooks, an armed fleet from Lie that spends much of the year on the high seas, and has a crew used to other nations' culture. When Kazuha got on board, the crew became more curious than surprised when an outlander began serving as a sailor on the Alcor. Still, Beido had made friends with him earlier, and when he came on board, she told her crew, this guy's gonna be staying with us for a while. Take care of him now. Of course, the crew trusted Beidou's judgment and admired Kazuha for his martial prowess, not to mention his ability to predict the weather. This quickly gained Kazuha the approval rating for the rest of the crew. Still, they were curious about his past, and so they would often find all sorts of excuses to try and ask him for information about his experiences. Despite these attempts, Kazuha would just be silent and eventually made the sailors give up asking. However, the chief mate Juza was the only one who managed to receive a reply from this wandering samurai. Hey, Inazuma boy, what are the lads supposed to call you if they don't even know your name? It was then that Kazuha replied and said, My name is Kaidihara Kazuha, a wandering samurai. I'm in your debt for taking me in, so just call me Kazuha. The crook's fleet now became Kazuha's new home, as he drifted on the ocean, wherever it took him. From his vantage point on the Alker's crow's nest, gazing out at the azure sea and sky, he finally had the space to think over the tumultuous events of his past and what it all meant to him. Every samurai wishes to live their life with passion and to claim the greatest reputation possible using the sword in their hands. But there will always be those whose base desires lead them astray from the path of justice and virtue, and whose blades leave an endless trail of enmity in their wake. Now exploring his story teaser, a recurring plot point revolves around the masterless vision, which had belonged to Kazuha's closest friend. A noteworthy point brought up in this teaser is in regard to the shogun's sword art, the Musono Hitotachi, wherein Kazuha's friend asked the question if there was someone who could withstand and dare to brave the lightning's glow. This implies that there will be someone who can withstand the Musono Hitotachi, which would symbolize that the Shogun's authority is not absolute. As Kazuha's friend died witnessing this art, which is what he's always desired, Kazuha wonders what expression he had on his face. What this expression looked like could be a potential story point if ever Kazuha gets his own story quest in the future. It is also probable that the most interesting part of his journey begins when he saw his late friend receive punishment from the Raiden Shogun. He grabbed his friend's dying vision and escaped. He then received aid from the Resistance, forming a close bond with Goro, and was taken in by Captain Beido. Kazuha even met the fabled traveler along his journey, and together, they would save Inazuma and its people. I believe we can also relate to how life has ups and downs. His journey, our journey, 
was like the rise and fall of a mountain path. At times, the struggles we took to climb the highest peak of a mountain were all but too much to bear. But remember, the best view comes after the hardest climb. And when we reach the mountain peak, we would be able to touch the mountain clouds and enjoy the moments of happiness. This is how I think Kazuwa's journey was so far. It is like a wheel spinning up and down. Sometimes you're up top, sometimes you're down low. And who knows what exciting adventures our fellow samurai will discover next. Will he continue to set sail with the crook's fleet? Or will he set off again by himself on his next journey? Another thing is that the most prominent design motif of Kazuha is waka, which means Japanese poem developed based on the Tang poetry format, haiku. Haiku is a type or format of waka. Now to add to his name, the kanji or hanzi for Kazuha is this, which Japanese and Chinese will instantly get the reference of Manyushu, the most famous collection of ancient Japanese poetry. Now as for Kazuha's elemental skill and burst, as well as the talent names, all come from popular waka pieces. His elemental skill, Chihayafuru, comes from a waka piece documented in Yakunin Ishu, which is a classical Japanese anthology of 100 Japanese waka by 100 poets. It is amazing to know how much waka is immersed in Kazuha's skill and art. Overall, Kazuha's character introduction when we first met him not only served as a great intro to an interesting plot, but it made me appreciate Kazuha's character so much. It's fantastic how much effort and care Mihoya put into Kazuha, including his design, gameplay, and overall story and character. I love that he served as an introductory character to Inazuma, and I found it even cooler that in an interview with Kazuha's Japanese voice actor, Shimazaki Nobunaga, who says that Kazuha's character was already planned, when Inazuma's core concept was already being started. So Kazuha was really there from the start. It was also fascinating that he played more important roles during the Inazuma story arc. He was present during the fight on Nazuchi Beach, as well as stopping the Raiden Shogun from potentially killing us with her blade. With the last scene of him visiting his friend's grave, and also possibly thanking him for standing with him until the end. Now it will be exciting to see what will be the next of Kazuha's story. And that's it. Now I want to hear from you guys from the comments. Let me know what you think about Kazuha as a character or how his skills help certain teams in their gameplay. Will we be seeing him in a story quest anytime soon? Share your thoughts down below. So now, if you enjoyed content like this, be sure to check out our other stuff including interesting facts for Genshin characters and lore videos. Now for everything else, I'm Clementine, stay tuned and be safe.